Math 083 Final Exam Review Problem 13 Parts B and C We will simplify both of these radical expressions. Since the radicand, the stuff here inside the radical, is made up of multiplied quantities, we can apply the square root to each of these multiplied quantities individually and then multiply those square root quantities together. In other words, square root of 48 times the square root of x to the 17th times the square root of y to the 8th power times the square root of z to the 3rd power. Now the largest perfect square that divides into 48 without remainder is 16. And 16 times 3 is 48. So square root of 48 is the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. Now because the root here is implied to be 2, we can rewrite this radical expression with a fractional exponent x raised to the 17 divided by 2 power. So power divided by root is the exponent. Likewise, we would have y to the 8 divided by 2 power, and then multiplying here on the end, z raised to the 3 divided by 2, or 3 halves power. Again, because each of these root numbers is 2. Now the square root of 16 is, of course, 4. So we have 4 times the square root of 3 times. We will convert 17 halves into a mixed fraction. 2 goes into 17 8 times with 1 remainder, so 17 halves is 8 and 1 half. And by properties of exponents, because 8 and a half means 8 plus a half, we can write x raised to the 8th power times x to the 1 half power. Again, because in multiplication, the exponents are added, and that's what we're indicating here. 8 divided by 2 is 4, so we have y raised to the 4th power. And 3 halves, as a mixed fraction, is 1 and a half. So we have z to the first power times z to the one-half power. We note that x to the one-half power, that is square root of x, and z to the one-half power is square root of z. Writing all of the non-radicals first, we have 4 times x to the eighth power, y to the fourth power, z to the first power, which is z. And then under a single square root radical, we can multiply 3, x, z. And this is our answer. Let's move on to part c. We are taking the cube root of a radicand consisting of multiplied quantities. So we can apply the cube root to each of those multiplied quantities individually, multiplying those results together. We have cube root of 108 times the cube root of a to the 14th times the cube root of b to the 16th times the cube root of c. Now looking at 108, we want to find not the largest perfect square that divides into 108, but the largest perfect cube that divides into 108 without remainder. 2 cubed is 8, so 8 is a perfect cube. 3 cubed is 27, so 27 is a perfect cube. 4 to the 3rd power is 64, that's a perfect cube. 5 to the 3rd power is 125, that's bigger than 108. The largest of these that divides into 108 without remainder is 27. In fact, since 108 is 27 times 4, we can write cube root of 27 times the cube root of 4. Now we convert this radical into the form having a fractional exponent. We write a raised to the power 14 divided by root number 3. So that's a raised to the 14 thirds power. Likewise, we have b raised to the 16 thirds power. And in the last radical factor, since this implied exponent is 1 and 1 is less than 3, I'm not going to convert this radical factor out of radical form into fractional exponent because I eventually want to go back to radical form in my final answer. The cube root of 27 is 3. And we have 3 times the cube root of 4. 14 thirds as a mixed fraction is 4 and 2 thirds. So we will write a to the 4th power times a to the 2 thirds power. 16 thirds is 5 and 1 third. So b to the 16 thirds power is 
b to the fifth power times b to the one third power. Again on the end here times the cube root of c. Writing the non radicals first we have 3 a to the fourth b to the fifth. And then under a single cube root radical we can multiply the following. 4 a to the second power because recall that's the power and this number here is the root times b to the first power inside the cube root radical and of course the first power we don't have to write that times c and that is our final answer